Okay guys, so last part of this texturing XYZ and Mari procedural skin tutorial. So this last part is about how to um, keep on creating your material and, and put everything in a template. So we can just like apply this template on any creature that we want to that we want to play with and that we want to texture. So in the former video, I showed you how to sort a little bit more of the node graph and how to create geo channels. How to promote nodes, which is something that we'll have to do afterward, and we'll have to uh, clear the connections. Uh, probably clear not the not the connection, but we'll probably have to clear the the order, and we'll probably ha also have to clear the the different names. So first thing I want to do here, let me just remind how to create a material. I think that I just have to do click on tab and create a material. Okay. Then I can ask Marie to create the shader network with it. So let's ask Marie to create it. And I want to select the shader. So this is really important because once you created something that is based on a particular shading network, on a particular shading presets, then you cannot apply it to another material. So let's say, for example, I cannot um, apply an Arnold standard surface material to a V-Ray material. So what you can do though, and because we did everything to the main node graph, so what you can do is just to copy and paste into another template. And then you will have, of course, to clean a little bit of this template, to clean a little bit of the behavior of this template. So your Arnold standard surface material is becoming a V-Ray material. So it's totally possible to do it, but um, it's just taking a bit of time of cleaning. So let me create this, uh, this Arnold standard surface and ask Marie to create the shader network with it. So again, remember, keep in mind that a material is a template and a shader is something that is done for the viewport. So I want to use to create a new template. So I simply need to click on OK here. So by default, I think with the new version of Marie, all of this output has been um, hidden. So what you can do is to show them directly in the viewport if you select your object. Don't remember the command for that. I have a command. Um, it's Alt1, Alt2, or Alt3 to show and hide the different inputs, which is something that uh, so Peter, the guy from the Mari channel, explained on one of his YouTube videos. So I really uh, push you guys to have a look at his YouTube channel, which is amazing with a lot of different tutorials and really in-depth tutorials on how to use the new, the latest updates and how to use a node graph. So if you want to learn out about that, just have a look at his YouTube channel. So the Mari, uh, the Mari channel is an amazing source of references. So what I did was to apply a shortcut for that. So uh, by default, when I click on Alt1 or Alt2, it's showing or hiding the inputs and uh, sorry, the outputs of this material. So let's have a look at what is happening on to, at our um, main node graph level. So what is happening? I want to have a look at the different inputs that my material is requiring. So what I can see here is that the primary, primary colors are expecting to get five inputs. The albedo GRP is also the albedo TLD, the albedo tile level GRP is also expecting an input which could be treated as a geo channel, but I will just keep it as an input, we never know. So albedo seems clean, cleaning layer, will make it to the albedo GRP, then uh, different ISOs, and then do I have any other inputs? No, so everything else is controlled with geo channel, which makes things easier, which make the connection to be uh, easier to find. So what I want to do first is to select this, do control C, then I will go into this material. Let's rename this first skin underscore MTL version 001 if you want to version it. And I will click on this little S so I can dive into this material. So things are a little bit hard to find by default into the with the main behavior of Mari. So what you want to do when you look for something, so let's say for example, looking for the diffuse, 
of this material. So what I can do, so I'm not using tab, so tab is here to create new nodes and G is here by default to search for new nodes. So I will search for the diffuse, which is this one. And that basically where I want to connect my albedo. So let me just pass the uh, albedo information I had before. Okay, connect this to the diffuse. And you will see that by default, it will apply um, some kind of color to the material, but because I have nothing to control these materials inside, um, these, these different colors inside of this material, that's why everything is appearing so black. So basically what is happening, what is uh, happening here is that the color four or the color five, which is the latest into my hierarchy, is controlling the full color of this object. So that's why I need to recreate my inputs so I can plug them directly into this material. So let's start by creating the first input, which should be the albedo uh, seams cleaning input. This one. So I will create, I will create an input, this, and rename it properly. So this one will become my uh, albedo. Al Bido seems cleaning in and I can plug it directly to my albedo seems cleaning input of this GRP and let's have a look at what is happening at the main node graph level. So sometimes it's also bug in Mari. So sometimes the first input that you create into a template into a Mari material is not visible here. So what you want to do is to copy it and paste it. So let's go back. Is it creating anything? Nope. Let's try to create another input. Interesting. Oh, sorry about that. So what is happening here is that basically because this one is reduce display mode, I cannot see things that are not populated. So for this reason, the input are not visible. So if I'm clicking here again, then I can see the different inputs. So sometimes um, this bug is happening. Yeah, the bug is happening at the moment. So you see the inputs, the first input without any name, the inputs um, that I create is the first input node is not, has not been recorded at the template level at the main node graph level. So that's why sometimes you need to copy and paste it. So it's visible. So, um, okay, so I can kill these different inputs. I do not need them anymore. Okay, I have now this albedo seems cleaning input that is um, ready. And I want to create the other one. So the other one should be ISO color four in, color one, color two, color three, and so on. So let's create them, input. Let's rename it into ISO color one in. I will just save this, making sure that this has been recorded at the main node graph level. So this, this is the case now. So I can duplicate it up to five times. So we can have even more way, um, even more color IDs. It's totally up to you guys, how many you want to play with and how many you want to create in your material. It's up to you, the level of control you want to get in the end. So I just created five uh, to show you, but usually in if I wanted to have a proper material that will be here to control the full skin of my object, I will need more. I will need one, for example, for the, for the skin pads. I will need one for the gum. I will need one for the for uh, maybe one for the lips, I will need also one for the belly and so on. So you really want to have as much control as you need, whatever is working fine to you. So um, now that I have these different inputs, let's have a look at the main node graph level. Okay, they, has, they, has, they have been recorded, so I can connect them to the correct input of my primary color. 
So this one will be controlling the color one. This one will be controlling the color two, color three, color four is above the other ones and color five like this okay so i can put them these different nodes out of the way and maybe cre create like a backdrop to uh, put them in the same place as they were before and now uh, that's it for the different inputs so i do not need any other inputs so what i will want to do is to select my spec do control C and paste it into my material. Whoops. Okay, so I have the spec. I want to also use the coat weight and the coat R and surface informations. Let's copy them here. Pass them here, sorry. Okay, so I have all of these informations available in these materials. Now I simply need to recreate the different connections. So with the spec weight color, I'm looking for the, sorry, uh, clicking on G and looking for the spec SPCW. Then I'm looking for the spec roofness so not this one which is a free nail but this one okay then what else do i need i need the coat i think it's cc should be ccw and ccr to control the roofness of the coat layer So this one will dive into this one. This one will be connected to the input of the coats roofness. And then uh, I will need the normal, which is norm and bump. I will put them here. And bump information like this, okay then I can put, so what I like doing is to take all of the um, different nodes that are controlled thanks to the, um, that are outputs. So this is basically an output and this output is populating the diffuse informations of my material and this one as well. So what I like doing is to put them with just within just one and single backdrop used outputs outputs okay click on okay and then there's one are basically the one i'm not using at the moment but we never know we can use them in different scenario so if now, if I'm just selecting the color, tertiary color, for example, on the diffuse, I should get the same control as the one I had before. Okay, so this is not happening. Why is it not happening? Let me click here. Click on the tertiary color. Okay, so I will need to do a little bit of investigation. So this one is working. Primary color is not working. So I should, I have to dive into this guy to make sure that things are connected properly. So let me have a look at this color one and compare it with this one. Okay, so look, it looks like the um, 
input information are not doing anything at this level. So let me just try to solve that. So I will go back to my skin material and have a look first at this one, see if it's populating. Oh, okay, I think that I, I see what is happening. Okay, so what I did, sorry about that, guys. What I did here is that I added the input, but I didn't populate them with any information. So this is basically what I do not have the same result as before. So when you are creating it, inputs into your material, uh, node into your material main node, what you need to do, of course, is to, to populate them. So this one will need to go here. Okay. It's basically just like creating group inside of the main graph. So this one should control the color one. Then this one control the color two, color three, color four, whoops, color five. And then let's try again. Go into the skin material, have a look at this primary color and this is working now. Tertiary color is working as well. What you can create, uh, let's say, so by default also, if you look at what is happening into the Arnold surface standard, the diffuse weight is at 80%, so I'm not sure why. This is something that um, the guys from Arnold has decided as a default value. So what you can do into the skin material is to put the diffuse weight. Where is my diffuse weight? This one. So just like we did for the spec color and for the spec roofness. So what you can do is to create a color node with a value of one. Rename that into diff or albedo weight color or diffuse weight it's up to you guys um i will just plug it here and now i can place this diffuse weight here into the used outputs then the diffuse weight should be at one okay so let's have a look at the other let's have a look at if we have the same exact display as the one we had before uh, with this material now. So it should take a bit of time to recompute everything that has been plugged into this node graph. Now if I'm clicking on F3, I should get the same information. So, okay, so the volumes information are isn't working properly. So that's something that I will need to sort. Or is it because, yeah, it's probably because um, I need to double click on this guy and the bump weight should be at 1.2 as it was in the previous shader. Let me have a look at this previous shader. 1.3 actually. Yeah. And you can put that into accurate if you want to get a better display. Um, not sure if there is a way to control the bump weight by default. Whoops, this. To have a bump. So I have a bump value, but I do, I do not have a bump um, multiplier. So you need to do that at the shader level. But anyway, it's working. So this is it for the material. I have the same exact information as the one I had before. Let me save things. So then there is one last thing I want to do here. And this last thing is making sure that when I'm double clicking on this skin material, I have access to certain informations. So one of the um, mistake will be to, to expose 
all the to promote all the different all the former information we had directly we exposed directly into the GRP. So this this is something that I used to do before, but I'm not doing it anymore. So what I'm doing instead is just to showing the main and most important information because when you double click on this template you do not want to have like hundreds of parameters available for you this will become too confusing what you want to do is just to have the primary values then you click on this primary values and if you want to have more control then you click on this little s so you can dive back into your material and you can have access to secondary values so the main values I like to play with is, for example, the albedo TLD repetition. So this is one of the primary information. So if I'm like playing with this, then I will get more or less styling. Just keep in mind that if you are styling it more, then you will probably need to re-clear the seams again because this seams cleaning is paintable information. This is not driven by, by compute computer uh, by, by automatic value series. This is driven by painted information. So you can promote this. Then what you can do is, for example, what you can do is to promote these um, different primary colors. Okay. Um, let me have a look at what is happening at the main node graph level. So the, those are the information that I have access to. So something that is a bit annoying as well is that by default, you do, the names is not inheriting from the former name. So you will have to rename it, rename them yourself. So what I want to do as well is double click on this skin material going to this editor and into this editor now I can rename the different different values. So this one will be my color one click on OK. This one will be my color two color three color um, four and color five and I will keep it like this then let me dive back into this material what I want to expose as well in my material is um, for example the curvature visibility so I can do that by exposing this setting, curvature in and curvature out. Just want to export the main settings for that. I do not want to play with the other ones. Uh, maybe you can export the values, expose, sorry, the values if you want to play with that. What I want to expose as well is the primary cloud um, visibility. So we export that and export that one. Okay. Then I want to expose this bright cellular visibility. Okay. And at the level of the tertiary color, what I will expose will be the value for the inside of the skin pores and the value for the outside of the skin pores. Let me have a look back at this material um, again. And of course, I will need to rename things just to make sure that everything is like more understandable. So this one is the edit curvature in VLU for brightness lookup. Curvature out PLU. So this value is um, primary cloud viz for visibility. Or val, let's rename that into val for value. 
actually this should be dark cloud value dark cloud and bright cloud value and this one will be cell for cellular these so this I think that this um, this exposed value and the name of this exposed value are probably not ideal. This is just to show you how to manipulate your your different model and how to expose the values that you want to play with for your for your material. Um, later on, I will probably run a second pass of cleaning just to make sure that I name rename things the in a better way, in a better fashion. But for now, this should do the trick. So tertiary color, this one is. In our dark pores, val, okay, dark pore, this one will be exterior pores value, so let's rename that into interior, and click on OK. So now I can play with the different information directly at this template at the main node graph level. Okay. If I want to get a bit more of skin pores, then I can make that slightly darker and contrast them even more by playing with these different values. Then when I will click on reset, so this will reset them with the information that was present at the time I decided to promote the different, the different values, which is really handy. So what you want to do at the uh, inside of this material is to define the main values. And then once you are happy with that as uh, being your default value, then you promote it and you will you will be able to, uh, if you mess with this value, then uh, when you will, once you will click on reset, it will reset it back. So I will save that. So another thing that I want to promote, so spec weight, spec roughness, coat weight. So with the coat weight, what you may want to do is to play with the brightness for um, the lips for the different areas. So it's up to you, the different values that you want to expose. Okay. Same for the coat roofness. Normal, I do not have anything to apply here for the Mary displacement. Do not have anything to apply again. Let's have a look at the different names that has been picked. Okay, so I need to rename things. Skin, uh, spec, weight, color is okay. Coat weight, okay, so coat weight. The first one was the eyelid, BGT, lips and nose. So eyelid. BGT leads lips BGT and nose. Click on OK. And then for the next pass, which is a coat way, coat roofness, sorry. So if the nose, lips, and eyelids. So nose, nose, lips, and eyelids. And then if you want to reorder them, you simply can up it. So it's following the same order as the former one. Up this one, 
and click on OK. And now I should have all the control I want to play with directly at the material level. So uh, one last thing that we may want to do. So what I like doing is basically to take also this texture XYZ control controller and I like to embed it directly into the material, not to create anything particular inside of the material, but just to make sure that if I need to use this gizmo again, then I'll be able to find it directly into my material. So I think that's it. So now I can save this scene. And the last thing, if I want to export this material, so we do not need it to play with everything remaining into the node graph. So if I want to play with this new and unique material, so what I can do now is to double click here and I'll be able to export it as a material. So let's put that into our ISO folder. Okay, and this one will be an MMA and I will export my Mari material out of Mari. Now let's have a look at our uh, exported folder. So in the exported folder, I can see that now I have a skin underscore MTL for material dot MMA, which is a format uh, for the Mari materials. So I have this material that is available now. And what I can do if I want to use it into my next project or um, if I want to load it into another session, to another Mari session. So what I'll be able to do will be to go into the, let me have a look at where this one is, into the shelf. I would just dock it like this, Mari material or personal. Then I will select this skin underscore MMA and I will drag and drop it here. So I have my skin materials. If I want to apply this material into this node graph, I can drag and drop it into my node graph. And you can see that now I have this Mari material that is again available. Let me save this. And the only thing that it will be asking will be, so if I'm going into um, node graph, the only thing that it will be asking will be the different inputs that I had before. So if I'm clicking on one and I want to see the diffuse of this guy, I will have the same Diffuse as, as I had before, which is this using the latest uh, color five as the main color because I have nothing else to control it. But if I'm picking the same nodes I, as the one I had at the beginning, then it should start to populate my albedo. with the same former values. As my previous one. Yep. So this is the albedo from this new skin material. This is the albedo that I had into the main node graph. So a little bit different because I played with the tertiary colors from my templates. And this is the albedo that I have into the template I created directly into this node graph. So you see same informations visible on different, um, different nodes. If I'm having a look at the bump, this is my bump. If 
I'm having a look at my spec. So not this one, I want to play with the spec white. So should be using this main flat value, but if I'm having a look at the um, code weight, where is the code weight? Clear code. Interesting. Sorry, where's the code weight? Which is CCTW. Then this is what I have. Should have the same exact one at the main node graph level. Okay, and the same exact one at this new material level. Perfect. So guys, this is it for how to create your material in the viewport, uh, in the node graph, sorry, and apply them directly onto your onto your object. I think that what I will do is to create a new video with another model, so I can show you quickly how it's working, um, how to apply this material on a new model, this template on a new model. But again, as you can see, everything is um, embedded into this one and unique node, so you can apply it to tons of new models and you can quickly iterate into your into your texturing process. So this is it for this explanation guys. I hope that you enjoyed uh, all the content of this tutorial and we'll see you in the next one.